Welcome back, Button Club members, to an episode of the Safe Sets Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Shadow Fury, and for the first time with me is not Mr. Ricky Icebeam, but we have... Tomato. Yeah, Tomato from Tomato's Retro Garden. Uh, if you're familiar with watching the Button Club weekly tournaments, you've probably seen us post the results from the um, side brackets that Tomato runs every week. He's our retro guy. Uh, what kind of games have we run so far at Button Club? It's been like a long, long list of them. Uh, this year we did Marvel vs. Capcom 2, CVS 2, Killer Instinct 2013, and now we're on Street Fighter 4. And that's been since the new year, right? Yeah, since the new year. Before then, um, we've run most every game that I can really think of that's been popular. Mm -hmm. Third Strike, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. And now since the new year, we've changed it so that we run a retro game for the entire month so everyone can get their hands on and become more familiar with it. Yeah, I like to see the progress. The uh, Because I, this is, I'm entirely selfish. This is why I did this. I wanted to play Killer Instinct. And uh, <laughs> this is a way to get other people to play it with me consistently. So uh, I just decided to do one retro game every month. Uh, and then we just run it. I was going to do... My wife's idea. I was gonna do an April Fool's uh, game. Oh every, yeah. yeah! It was gonna be some sort of like Rain, Wayne Gretzky like hockey game, and just start set up a bracket of like hockey fights. But uh, I didn't have the time to like do it to prep all that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's too funny. And uh, do you remember when we started running the retro games at Button Club? Uh, when did I show up? Do you know? Uh, well, when was yeah. fighting in the streets? It was kind of after that. Fighting in the streets, that was the GU tournament, right? So that was, I think, July. The game was only out for, or like end of June. It was really right after the release of Street Fighter VI. Yeah, I think I showed up for casuals sometime after that, and then uh, I played in bracket one time or two times, and then after that I was like, hey, could you support, uh, you got table space? I got stuff, and you're like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, it's just been every week. Uh, ever since I've been bringing heavy CRTs. Yep, yep. So this month's not bad though. Usually it's just what two laptops. I bring a CRT for fun, but which I liked. I liked having that extra setup for everyone and some of the friends that you had brought that wanted to check it out. Yeah, they're pretty. It's got a nice glow to it. It does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for today's topic uh, for the podcast is you know perfect that we have Tomato here because we wanted to discuss. What a lot of people are talking about on on Twitter X and uh, and or YouTube. So I'll just change the scene real quick, and we can see what started it all here. So you guys can see here, Punk the God posted this on March 27th, saying fighting games nowadays been taking away from unique play styles, and that kind of sucks. It was nice seeing different styles, rather it be lame, aggressive, neutral based, etc. Now they're just trying to make everyone play rushdown style, which I just don't think suits everyone. And then of course there is a you know litany of comments underneath here, people agreeing, disagreeing, and stuff like that. You got your boy Hanny over here. We're all familiar with Beyond Frame Data's Hanny. So I figured if this is a topic of conversation for the community, it would be perfect to have Tomato here because he has the most experience with the retro games out of all of us at Button Club. And since that has changed the entire dynamic, I just wanted to get his uh, opinion on a lot of these things. So, first read through here, what's the first thing you think of? Uh, I mean, I don't disagree with Punk. Uh, this was framed to me initially as uh, older games were harder than newer games, mm -hmm. which I, I agree and disagree with. Uh, I, I do feel like Punk may have a point with, like... Rushdown's heavily rewarded in a lot of the newer games, but yeah. I think it's just because that's what makes people that are watching excited. Like, you watch Rushdown, and it's really swingy. People like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, Marvel Marvel 3 is a good example of that. Like, comebacks are crazy, but they weren't in that game. Comebacks were pretty normal. So, uh, I don't know. I've, I've been playing no Tekken at all. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but from playing... Um, Street Fighter 6, I, I don't see a lot of different play styles. Like, there's only the one, two grapplers-ish, but most of the time it's the only real zoner that I can think of is, like, Dalsim, JP-ish, but he kind of does everything. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like everybody in that game can do everything, except for, like, Zangief and Lily can't really do everything. Yeah, <laughs> And yeah. that's why they're 
kind of low. They're pretty held back, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I don't. If we wanted to go on the topic of are the games harder, like older games harder? Uh, yeah, we can talk about that. I, I think because that's what this is what sparked that discussion, and then other people start chiming in and sharing, and they're like, "Yeah, I agree." And I feel like every time there's a new fighting game that comes out. Uh, even though, you know, like five was hated for a while, right? But now that six is out, people are looking back at five, remembering fond time. Same thing with Tekken eight. You know, it's rewarding that rush down, much like he's saying, but everyone's like, man, Tekken seven was so much better. So, yeah, I, I can see that. I've been pretty head in the sand on this discourse, uh, but I have seen earlier iterations of it. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I agree that newer games are easier. And I think the reason that I say that is that newer games are generally like really resource like you got to manage your resources really well mm -hmm. and that's not I mean that is the case in older games but you have so many different resources and different paths and combos are like super long compared to I think Zangief if you look at like a Zangief combo that's like how old fighting game combos are his combos are like oh I hit four buttons and I did like half your health where yeah. newer ones I, I play jamie so i gotta work real hard i, I got a million hits and the scaling murders me mm -hmm. but like i have to remember so many things and there's like oh this stage of the combo i have to do this and then i have to do that and then the buffer is easier and less easy at the same time i get accidental supers constantly yeah i mean i did when it first started um street fighter 6 they fixed it thank god but it was pretty bad, like, to the point where I didn't do DP, and I, that's kind of a problem that I have now that I'm still trying to get rid of, is I don't try to anti-air DP because I get super so much. Accidentally, yeah. yeah. and I just get blown up for it, so I just stopped doing it. Um, and I'm trying to work through that now, but the, the buffer is different and harder to work around, in my opinion. And it's harder to work around because if I do something that's, like, I don't know, minus five on block, the buffer makes it so that the person that if they know what button to push, if they push it, they're going to punish me. Where older games, uh, there was less of a buffer, so they needed to be real on the spot with the mm -hmm, button presses. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like you used to get away with so much more and simpler game plans with the older games until yeah. you get to like, you know, crazy high God level play. Um, I think that's like beyond the arcade. Like if you're at like a real tournament, if you're just like messing around and you're trying to show the local kids kind of what's up or even people in your age group, but to get out of the arcade and then go into a competitive scene, that's when everything kind of just gets. Yeah. And up, even right? then I'd say majors, right? Like, cause your, your locals are probably not going to have the level of play that is going to be like, you're just, you know, you get two, three touched every time, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe there's like one or two people there that'll do that, but it's not it's not the case in older games as much i think mm. and that makes them easier because you can get away with more they're yeah. harder because the precision is your inputs need a lot more precision yeah but your your game plan can be simpler your game plan can be a lot simpler and then just you don't you don't get punished as hard usually you get the rare person that does but it's not, you know, like Malachi. Yeah. Or Monokai, that's his name. Um, he came, yeah, it was a Monokai. He came over and uh, uh, I was playing some CVS, like, casually, and I just picked random, and he started playing, and then he's, like, just casually roll-canceling on me, which is, like, really high-level, like, difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, oh, you play this game. He was, like, blowing <clears throat> me up. But even then, I was kind of, like, keeping up. It wasn't like a blowout where... These games, like Street Fighter Six, is real snowbally. Yeah, like you can just get like momentum you could be, based. You could be a god and still get perfect. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy how that works. And that in that way, it's easier, but it's in that way, it's harder too. Because mm -hmm. like you know, in these newer games, there is a you know built-in like punish mechanic, which gives you extra frame advantage mm -hmm. and or maybe some more damage. But if we're talking like you know Street Fighter Two back in the day. A punish was a punish. It was whatever you could get off to uh, to counter your opponent's advances, and that was really it. And these combos weren't super long, um, but also devoid of like big major mechanics. Like we were talking a little bit off camera about um, the mechanics in uh, Third Strike, right? And that being basically you have EX, 
supers, which had already been around, and then the parry mechanic. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I mean, you get the universal overhead, and then throw was light punch, light kick. I think that's the game that they introduced it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's new. Like, every throw is a command throw at that point. Mm -hmm. And then you can tech them by... Da oh, there's dashing in that, too. I don't think Alpha had dashing. That's true. Yeah, so that's true. there's a few extra, like, systems in place, but it's just less to think about overall. Yeah. Where <clears throat> now I got to think about my drive gauge, which is also my guard gauge, which is also my EX gauge, which is, like... So much is tied into it, and yeah. then I get stunned off of that, and I take chip damage off. There's so much to think about. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and Super Turbo specifically, like I play Honda, and my game plan is just as brain dead as it gets. I like, I'll do jump ins with like heavy punch, and if they don't anti air me, I am mashing Oicho throw with all the buttons because it's a negative edge game. So you get, you know, if you press all three of the buttons and then you let go of all three of them, you get six chances to get throws, and throws are usually, like, I think there's zero frame starts in... Super yeah, they're, like, basically instant, Yeah, right? your throws are god buttons in that <clears throat> game, so it's, that's my game plan, and if I don't get an Oicho throw and they block, it's kind of like an option select where I can get hands after, which it chips. Oh, that's true, yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's just, like, super brain dead, but it does a grip of damage, like, <laughs> it's... It's funny to watch, but you know it's I don't have to think to about watch. it. Yeah, yeah I, ne yeah. I never ever do super, honestly. <clears throat> no, but, no, the super is there, but I the games never get long enough where I have to do them. Yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, well, I could finish this round with an extravagant super move, but you might not even need that. Or sometimes the startups on them are really, uh, I feel like a, a a little long. Like I played a lot of uh, Ryu back then, right? So to get that. That super Hadouken, it charges it up and then comes out. So by the time it actually hits them, or they'd have the opportunity to uh, just completely avoid it. And, and it's not something that you can really combo into, right? Can I mean, you combo you, into you, super you, you then? Yeah, super, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 Some, some people do some crazy stuff in that game. But it's it's not, um, but the timing's really tight. Yeah. And then you're taking a huge risk because you're jumping in. But it's one of those games that a jump in gets like a third of your health. <laughs> and it's a real simple game plan, right? Mm, mm. Where you can get that here too, but a lot of things can go wrong in between. Uh, we were talking about roll canceling earlier. For those uh, watching at home who might not know what roll canceling is, what is that? So Capcom vs. SNK two in the arcade version, they got rid of it in the Xbox and GameCube version. Those are the EO versions. Uh, so a Kara cancel, which Kara I think is an empty cancel, right? Yeah. So. You could Kara cancel a roll, which is like a King of Fighters roll. So you roll forward, you have like X frames of invulnerability. You can get thrown out of it, but you're strike invulnerable. Is this on wake up or just you can just do it? Just, you can just, just do, do it. it. Okay. You can just do it. Uh, anytime you can roll, you can do that. So you can, within three frames of the roll, you can input a special move and you basically got to plink it um, and you get the invulnerability frames of the roll while still doing the. Oh, um, okay. The special move, which is like <laughs> incredibly abusive, it's still not top level. Like um, A Groove is arguably the best groove in that game. K Groove is the second, or I think K Groove is probably the best because it's the it's got the simplest game plan and like the lowest bar of execution. Like just defend is really easy to do. You just block last second, um, and then you get life and you get advantage frames, kind of like a parry, hmm. um, but. The roll canceling, a lot of the times when you're doing the stuff that you want to be invulnerable for, you're in their face, so it's a really risky it's a really risky gamble because mm. you can just get hit out of it, but if you get it, you get big, big rewards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you also get in your opponent's head and make some kind of challenge stuff a little less, so or they just don't know what roll canceling is and they're just like, Wow, that beats that weird. And then you just keep going. But that's like that is an example of, like, really, really high-level execution that I don't think, like, Street Fighter Six doesn't have that other than, like, pre-jump frame canceling with Zangief. That's the only thing I can really see that has, like, that level of, like, you, you have four frames to do this, you got to cancel this thing into this other thing, and then that gives you these special properties. Like, other older games have that, and then older older games are l way less balanced, so which yeah, makes yeah, yeah. life way degenerate uh, at the higher levels, like... I don't know a lot about Street Fighter 4, but from what I've been playing this month, I think it probably gets incredibly degenerate at high levels. Yeah. Um, sure. Because <laughs> there's a lot of really ambiguous, like, jump. 
the jumping is incredibly ambiguous in that game, and I, I feel like that's very abusable. But I, I don't know. Mm. You didn't play much Street Fighter Four. I, I didn't play any Street yeah. Fighter Four. I missed Street Fighter Four and I missed Street Fighter Five. I didn't play any of it at all. Oh wow! The, the long I played Street Fighter Four for the longest in bracket last uh, last week. Last week or this week, whatever week it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, I didn't play a whole lot of four either. And then getting into five, you hear all this talk about people saying like, "Oh, this isn't a real Street Fighter. Everything's a little bit slower." Or this is this and that, and and they missed a lot of the technical like depth that Street Fighter Four had compared to five. Um, Backdashes being invincible and, and things like that. Kara canceling, which wasn't like super popular. I don't, if if there at all in Street Fighter Five, I'm not even really aware. Um. So the whole time, what were you playing up until most recently? Like, were you, have you is, would you say CVS two is like your favorite game? Yeah, that time? honestly, uh, I had, I didn't really get super serious into fighting games until I think maybe right around COVID kicking off. Uh, maybe a half a year into that, I figured out that Fightcade was a thing, and I started just grinding CVS two. And I was a pad player, and then I made the transition to joystick. And then I think Street Fighter Six is the first game that I like, other than CVS, that I like really tried to make a go of getting good at. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and like from that, the beginning too, right? Because like, would you say like CVS Two hit and you were as soon as it was released, that was your game, and you've played it ever since, or did you get oh, into that not, late? I, so I did when it was released. CVS Two was my first jaunt into like playing online fighting games because yeah. on the Xbox it had it had online, so that was fun. So it. You know, we all played, you know, super, not super turbo, just Street Fighter 2, which is what, hyper fighting on the SNES? Yeah, so yeah. So we all played that. So I played that, and then I used to play Killer Instinct on the SNES when I was younger. And I, like, always enjoyed them, but then I kind of fell off for a while. I never really got into the Street Fighter Alpha, Third Strike. I kind of missed that whole thing. And then Street Fighter 4 came out, and I, I wanted to play it, but it wasn't scratching that itch. Like, CVS 2 was, like, really really snappy compared mm. to Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 4 is pretty fast. Like, I'm, I'm starting to play it, and I'm like, oh, okay, I, I can see where this game does get fast. Like, yeah. Street Fighter 6 seems slow until you start getting into it, and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, this is a pretty fast game. Um, but it just wasn't scratching that itch, and then I kind of stopped. But I did play it when it came out. I worked at a video game store. It was uh, Game Crazy. It was attached to, like, Hollywood Video. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I, yeah. I ended up playing... That's that's where I met Green Shell, actually. Green Shell is, like, a little little teenager. Oh, yeah, in. yeah. The yeah. one here in New Bedford? Yeah. Yeah, no the kidding. Wow. No, yeah. I, that the, that's the store that you worked at? Was the no, one I worked at the one in Fall River. Okay. I lived in Fall River. Okay, all right. So I went over... Um, we actually had a, a tournament one time, and I didn't know what cross-ups were, and I just got absolutely blown up on a knowledge <laughs> check. It was, like... Uh, I can't remember who it was... It was somebody's brother. I think his name was Maldi. We used to play online. He'd be like, oh, I fight you all the time. That was his thing. He he was Ken. He swept me. And then he jumped over me, medium kick, sweep. Jump over, medium kick, sweep. And he just blew me up. I thought I was so good until then. And I was like, man, this game's dumb. I don't know. What is even happening? How am I supposed to block this? And that was my first real big knowledge check that I ever remember. And then I played it for a while, but then the online is just not great. It was delay based, so yeah. it's just super trash. Mm -hmm. And then rollback, rollback is like the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. So I played it. I played it a lot. I thought I was trying to get good at it, but I never really like knew the levels that it took, the amount of grinding like that yeah. it really takes. Mm -hmm. um, we're at close in age. Yeah, eighty four. Okay. So, yeah. 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 So, like, uh, I'm sure our, our uh, starting stories are, are pretty similar, right? Because yeah. uh, even for myself, um, <clears throat> I remember seeing Street Fighter 2 played on the Super Nintendo at my cousin's house, and then that was it. I, I had to get Super Nintendo, and the I had to rent thing. that game. Absolutely the coolest thing. There was nothing cooler than, like, gathering around the, the, the little floor model TV and just playing with you and your cousins, your brothers, yeah. and just, like, just on the man. Mm -hmm. That was the coolest thing. It was, like... I've been chasing that high my whole life, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those weekends, you'd have friends over, whatever. I'll never forget, um, you know, uh, I grew up uh, and lived in Dartmouth. And my next door neighbor, which was like an elderly couple, okay, and their uh, grandson came up from uh, Florida, right? 
And uh, I I met him outside. We started talking about video games and riding bikes. And then he was my best friend for that whole weekend that he was in Massachusetts. And we went to, uh, remember the RX place in Dartmouth? No. No, no. It was like a, um, like a half-ass like, pharmacy almost. Kind of like um like a Walgreens or whatever, but it had a video rental section. Ah. So you could rent VHS and you could rent games. It was a dollar to rent a game for the weekend. And I never owned a Street Fighter game at that time. I would just rent it every weekend that I could, you know, that Mortal yeah, Kombat. That's, like, that's that, like, long long arcade comedy. Yeah, right there, yeah, right? basically. A dollar, a dollar at a time, you know? <laughs> um, and when uh, so when he came over that weekend, we rented um, Super Street Fighter 2, and that was the first time that I had seen that Fei Long's in the game and everything, you know. So um, that that whole game just just blew me away. That art style. I had the I didn't have the game, but I had the um, uh, the like like the big uh thick the strategy guide. Uh, I had the strategy guide because it had all the artwork in it. And you read it and you're like, oh my god. I, and like I don't understand any of it. And um, even um, like my whole art career was based off of buying comic books. And not reading them and just drawing the cool pictures. That's exactly what I did. I would just draw some of the pictures that were in the strategy guide and stuff. But um, yeah, those those games felt so simple and easy for the time, except for the special moves. Um, we used to like not be able to get DPs whenever you wanted. So it was like I let me do forward and fireball and hope that I get it and maybe I can hit the button at early time like that. The whole uh, input just felt so not natural, right? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that down forward was the final input for a DP until, like, I don't know, three years ago, maybe? Yeah. Well. I thought it was forward and firewall. Yeah, see? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know how to do uh, SBD either, like, with Zongief. I play a lot of Zongief, but, like, yeah. I was Super Nintendo. I was like, what, what, is this, what does this circle mean? To the point where, like, I never played him because of that. I was like, this doesn't make sense. How do I do this without jumping? You know what? I'm going to leave that character alone. And it wasn't until... Uh, Street Fighter Five because it's like my first introduction to competitive fighting games, and uh, I'm like everyone's saying, oh, they made it easier. You don't have to do a full circle. It's just half circle, you know, back and up or to forward and up, and you can and it, the game still counts it, you know. Uh, and even learning like leverless, not needing the diagonal directions and only needing the cardinals. So I was like, wow, that's so easy. I can play the neutral, back forward, back forward. Then oh, when I'm ready to SPD, down up light punch and then <laughs> get that big range, you know. So in that aspect, you can see how things have become a little bit simpler, right? Um, but like you were saying earlier, the mental stack of how much Street Fighter VI is throwing at you, that's really what, what weighs you down. And then the list of decisions that I feel like you've made, and then like checking that off in a box, okay, I've done this, I've done this, I haven't done this yet. Uh, I've showed him all my cards. Which one do I do now to try and mix them up? I think that's the depth and level where these new games come into, right? Yeah, and there is that level on some of the older games, too. Um, systems, like, super systems-heavy games have that kind of depth, like Guilty Gear, um, except, like, AC Plus R or whatever. That one's, mm -hmm. like, just system upon system upon system, and the whole game relies on all those systems. And that's, like, those old games, that game's crazy hard. but And ahead of its time, really, right? Oh, like, yeah, because I came out around the same time, like, 2000, well... Mm -hmm. that specific version came out around like 2000 ish. Yeah. But there was like versions before that as well as like just guilty gear. Mm -hmm. And then it was like guilty gear X, guilty gear XX. And then guilty gear, it just kept building on it. Kind of like super turbo, like street fighter two. Yeah, yeah. It did that thing Yeah, where that was the case. But the, I feel like there's a lower barrier to entry for somebody to just kind of pick up and like do a move. Like somebody to do uh, like a shore. You can, is much easier now than it used to be. And mm -hmm. that's, I think that's a net gain. Uh, yeah. I, th I think that's good. I think that's just good design to make it easier because the whole problem that people have, the reason why there's not as many people playing these games is like the the brain game interface is just too hard for people to, you got to learn a language to have a conversation. And yeah. You can't, you can't talk to people until you learn that language. And people don't like to feel dumb. And that's yeah. how they feel when they can't do the things. Like, nothing gets me more tilted than the game not doing the thing that I want it to. I don't get mad that I lose. I get mad that the game didn't do the thing that I wanted it to do. Yeah. Because that's just, like, a problem with my execution, which obviously I value. And I, I guess that's probably where some people are like, well, older games are, are harder. So, you know, they pat themselves on the back because it's like, 
they value their execution, and you yeah. should. Of course, yeah, yeah. You, it's hard to be uh, competitive in these games without having good execution. Yeah, but I, I got dumb hands, as uh, Jay Wong would say. Like, I was just... Combo trials are not, not my thing. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I, I grind out the combos that I need, and then past that, if I start freestyling, usually it's the beginning of the end for me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's just better to have easier barriers to entry. Of course. But with Punk's first post saying that there's less, like, play styles, I would like to see different play styles. There's no, like, um, real uh, puppet master character. Oh, uh, okay. I, I know That is a really cool archetype to watch, or archetype. Um, I think that's kind of... CBS2 had, like, Chang and Choi, which I send, uh, send Choi out while Chang does different things. That's, like... A cool take on zoning that, and I, I think Guilty Gear Strive has that too, right? What's um, does Jacko do that? Oh yes, Jacko. She did the yeah. little robots. I, yeah. I didn't play Strive at all. Like I, I played it like twice, got blown up every time, and I was like, all right, this this game, that's not not for me. Because <laughs> you know you can say whatever you want about that game and it being simpler, but this Guilty Gear Strive was my first Guilty Gear ever. <laughs> And the pacing of that game is what made it more difficult for me. The execution and doing bigger combos, not a big deal. And getting my brain around the different uh, Roman cancels, that wasn't too bad either. But having to guess in a split second and not not being able to see anything to go, oh, they're they're flying in. This could be uh, you know an empty low. I, before you know it, you're like, they're in my face. I would lose that game sometimes. And, and friends of mine in tournament would be like, oh, you lost. Be like, yeah, well, what happened? I, don't I have know. no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, that's like I, I a, didn't win. <laughs> that's not a place that people want to be at. That's like what drives people away from playing mm-hmm. games. Or these games is because it's like you, the people that you're playing against have, are so far above you that you can't learn or mm-hmm. you feel like you can't learn. And that's like unfortunate. That's like I hate to see it. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why I don't play that game. Yeah. That's probably part of the reason why I haven't played Tekken. I just don't have the time to like grind because now like – I mean, I got I grind Street Fighter Six, yeah, uh, and I feel like I'm not really doing a lot of it. Like I, when I was still like working my way up to master, I think I was doing like, not counting Button Club, like maybe eight to ten hours every week on top of Button Club. Plus on the weekend, usually Saturday or whatever, I'd play like ranked in the morning for like eight hours. Oh wow! So I would just go and do that, and then I'd play like casuals after I'd hit the lab. So I was just grinding, 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 and I just don't have it in me to, like... Not that I don't have it in me, I just don't have the time. Like, life catches up. I can only kind of do one game at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, like, playing Tekken lately has been more to just, like, fill the bracket. And I have interest in Tekken, but not the same love that I have for Street Fighter. So I'm basically, like, I'm here, I'll play, I'll probably get better by accident, basically, you know, because I'll, I'll put in my time. But, um, yeah, Street Fighter is, is what really holds my attention. Like, I absolutely love that game. Um, what was something I was going to bring up about? Oh, so we were talking about execution. So, uh, and and that, how that can kind of gatekeep people from getting into these games, right? Yep. So if you feel like you are watching high-level gameplay and you see these people do these special moves and you're like, oh, let, let me try and do it, you can't throw out a DP or a, or a fireball and you're like, well, how am I supposed to get to where this level is if I can't even do the basics, right? So I think making the actual inputs a little bit easier isn't isn't a big problem. And I still have issues with, you know, catching a DP or an accidental fireball here and there. Um, but I think what becomes difficult now in the game is the strategy, knowing your mix-ups, your opponent's mix-up, the matchup and things like that, which has always been there. But I think the level that everything is at right now is just that much more exaggerated. And um, a lot of that, like we, uh, we said a little bit earlier uh, off camera, was you know if you wanted to get good at a game in your arcade, you had to have someone that knew more, probably someone older than you, to teach you these things. And even then, it's it can seem like a, such a foreign concept. If someone was like, hey... Um, you know, you're losing this matchup because your footsies are bad. And you'd be like, well, what the hell are footsies? And then how do you explain that, right? Now, if you don't understand what footsies is, you go to YouTube, you go to, you know, FGC dictionary, and there's so much information on it and how to apply it. So it feels like more of a obtainable skill now than it did back then, right? Yeah, you don't have the, the shortcut uh, language, right? Like 
footsies is a concept, right? Yeah. And okazeme is a concept. It's yeah. a Japanese word. I don't know what it means, but it's focusing on the game about getting up. Yes. Like the get up game. Yeah. Like yeah. Your options and their options. That's it's an old term and it's it's a very crucial big part of Street Fighter in general. And I think it's like incredibly like important in six because mm-hmm. like the, the I was gonna die a tribe there real quick, but yeah. So having the the resources of information available now makes your average player that wants to get good a lot better mm-hmm. than somebody who doesn't have the experience, doesn't have online play, can't watch their favorite pro um, just merc people online. Mm-hmm. Like I like Evo Moment 37, right? It's like one of the most the famous that's it. That's the moment. If anybody's yeah. seen a fighting game moment, it's that. Mm-hmm. And it's like somebody filming it on what seems today like a potato looking yeah. at over somebody's shoulder on a screen and you can kind of see a little bit and there's somebody's heads in the way and then it's yeah, like yeah. that's the information that you got right mm-hmm. like somebody who is like oh it's impossible to parry chun Li's super and then it happened in bracket <laughs> at evo it's like that information, like, nowadays, if somebody's like, that's impossible, somebody would be like, bet, watch. Yeah. Three hours later, or, like, two days later, mm-hmm. somebody has grinded that up to the point where they've done it, they've they've wrote a dissertation on it, there's there's charts, graphs, videos on it, and, yeah. like, three how-tos in, like, four languages. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that just wasn't available then, and I no. think that... And when I was playing, I was trying to learn, like, Street Fighter Four a little bit, like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna pick Yun, right? Like, let me pick a top tier. <laughs> For once in my life. Let me pick a top tier. <laughs> so I can go and look at all that stuff, but even the built-in training mode in Street Fighter VI has that frame meter on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, what a gold mine that uh-huh. is. Like Street Fighter Four doesn't have that. So now I gotta go and like let me pull my phone up. What's this? And you it's only like the canned stuff, like, oh, what's DP on hit, right? But what's DP on hit if they're 15 frames into their jump? A completely different number, yeah, right? Because yeah, they yeah. got to fall. You're gonna land earlier. That stuff you can lab out in Street Fighter Six and have the frame data right there, like mm-hmm. the objective evidence on these like edge cases. And Tekken has like you can play the replay back and jump into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh, I love that. I, mm-hmm. Every game needs that. Mm-hmm. Every game needs that. That's my season two Street wish Fighter list. wish. Yeah. I want that. I don't forget the balance changes. Give me that. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And when that came up for tech, and people were saying that that was in that was an older fighting game, that like that was in something else. I what else was that in? That's amazing. I, I forget what game that was. Comment down below if you know what I'm talking about. The you know being able to jump into a replay and 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 work out that punish or that situation or whatever. Um, like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. This guy knows. <laughs> All that stuff. He's been here before. <laughs> Um, yeah, the frame meter in Street Fighter 6 is legendary because the frame information in Street Fighter 5 came later and it was was terrible it would give you like plus or minus or this and that and like um your 3d model would turn red if you were minus or green if you were plus and stuff like that but to see the individual frames and the and to work all that out i know what's active i know what's recovery and it's not just numbers on an app or you know what people are telling you you can tangibly see it every time and then you know going back to the oki setups seeing like Oh, I've knocked someone down and, you know, I've got, I'm 45 frames ahead of them. That's a safe jump. And like, I didn't know what a safe jump was until like Guilty Gear Strive, maybe even season two. I didn't know what a safe jump was until somebody at work told me what it was. Really? Uh, Neighborhood Sage. Yeah. He, he, he plays Jamie as well. Yeah. 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 He came in and he was like, oh, that's a safe jump setup. And I was like, oh, what now? And he's like, safe jump. Like you can jump in and like, there's nothing they can do. It's like safe. And it's a jump. I was like, like like <laughs> that's that's possible <laughs> achievement <laughs> unlocked right yeah yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah that's what i'm saying like i'm i'm super new to like trying to be good yeah yeah and just understanding how these games work but i have played the older games and i do know that the execution is harder but i don't feel like the the tools to get good were there so the odds of you running into a god are like evo yeah, yeah, yeah. At the biggest stakes of the yeah, like combo right? breaker, like these big, huge regionals, you're gonna run into like gods at these older games, but you're not gonna run into them, especially now, just 
at locals. So you get somebody that's been playing for a while on their couch and they think they're good. Mm-hmm. They're probably not, or they're like at your level. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Good, decent fundies, but nobody's really labbed out every optimal meaty setup and mm-hmm. all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, there's even like um, there was also the talk about. Uh, let me see if I can actually find it here real quick. Actually, it's not even really worth it because I'm just going to read the same thing. Um, Mena had – someone called out uh, Mena on his opinion to what Punk had said or the discussion of fighting games being easier now than what they were back then. And he basically said, like, look, I could I could go back to, you know, let's say Third Strike, and I could learn that game. I have the work ethic that I if I put in the time, I, I, I can get into that game and get adequate, but – how do you be someone that's had the 10 plus years or the 20 years into the game to, to know everything and to have practice that have the response and then get in that hill to climb now seems so much more daunting rather than, Oh, this new game's out. We're all at the bottom of the mountain here. You know, some of us have climbed a little bit more and less, but we can all rise together where that that's so much more difficult to go backwards. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a, I think that's a, the Japanese have a word for that, and it's like the older games. It's like a stale, like rotten, stagnant water. That's uh, the word. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. the translation for it. But that's like one of those games, and like it's, I get that. That's I could see that. A, a good example of somebody who I don't I don't know when um, Smug started playing <laughs> fighting games, mm-hmm. but I ended up like he caught he came across like my my YouTube streams, and I started like I started watching them. Like I go to bed, I, I watch YouTube as I fall asleep. Same, and I um. Notice he started playing CVS2 on Fightcade. Oh, yeah, yeah, And I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, word. Uh, and he's just like, I didn't know, like, he was in, like, Capcom Cup. He was like, you know, he's, he's got some accomplishments, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I started, like, on his stream. I was like, oh, what's up? Come through. So we'd play, and, like, he'd, like, he'd clobber me, right? But it wasn't like I couldn't get to a point where I'd beat him. And then you'd see him play, like, Justin Wong. On stream, right? And Justin Wong just, like, molly Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. it ain't even close. And now it's getting to the point where, he, like, he'll play with Justin Wong, and, like, the fact that Fightcade has, like, two, three frames of delay is making it so that stuff that isn't really viable in, like, tournament is being viable against somebody like Justin, who's got, like, crazy reflexes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, um, Morgan, for example. Like, watch... Watch Smugs Morrigan. It's like um, Silent Scopes Morrigan. It's just like rush down. Like it's really hard to deal with online because yeah. like triangle jumps and then you, you're covering yourself with your fireball. It's nuts. But he he was taking games off of like Jay Wong after like maybe like a year of him just wow. kind of playing on stream and stuff. And that's like I think that's a really good example of somebody who I think is probably a newer fighting game player compared to like the old old Justin you know, Wong. Yeah, yeah, Justin yeah. yeah. Wong. And him him going and putting some of the time in and like seeing some of the benefits from it like and if he keeps it up you know like I, I have no 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 doubt in my mind that if I was like yo come through smug let's go on on CVS two he just he just wipe the floor with me he, yeah, he, yeah, one yeah. character victory with the, that Morgan I can't deal with it mm. right <laughs> but before it wasn't like that so like it's it's it shows that it's not that like newer fighting game players can't do it or. Uh, you you young bucks, you don't understand how it used to be. Like it's it's time. It's all it's of all course. it's ever been. It's just grind. There's no shortcut to getting good at these. No. You can have a natural talent, but you can't outwork somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they they will get better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, work ethic will mm-hmm. always win. You know, and, these, and that's like that in any any facet of life, right? Like you can be so gifted and this and that, but if you don't put in the work or really try and make yourself get to that level, it's it's almost impossible. Yeah, it's like the the Dunning Kruger effect where people are like, so there's like two parts parts of that. Most people think that like people that are stupid think they're really really good, but there's like a hill of um, that you climb where you start to learn about a thing and you start thinking, oh, I'm good, and then you get to a point where you start to know so much that you realize you know nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's like the valley of despair. And that's where like the real learning starts. And you, you end up being like really good and competent at that thing, but you still think you aren't good because you understand like there's so much about this that I still don't know mm-hmm. that these people do know. Mm-hmm. And that's like a real thing in fighting games. Like it's just the, the level of skill 
becomes exponential. If you start playing in Master League, you're gonna you'll find that out pretty quick. Oh yeah. Like the difference between fifteen hundred and like sixteen sixteen fifty, yeah. it's like it's a bell curve. Like yeah. they they are they got their stuff together. You know they're gonna they're gonna give you a hard time. And then when you get to the point where it's like a legend, you're just like, wow. Yeah. Good good on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know shit about this game. Yeah. Right? right. And then you know at any level, someone still has to lose. So it's not that. One player is that much worse than someone else, but they had a good day, or that was just them at at the peak, or that situation. That's just how the games played out. So oh, you made good decisions, or you just you guessed right on rock paper scissors, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Sometimes it's just I guess wrong three times and I lose. Sometimes I guess right three times and I win. Yep, yep. I uh, I was playing uh, on. We were streaming the other night with my brother, doing some ranked matches, and I ran into this Ken, and they were definitely beatable, but. They were super solid. And when I threw caution to the wind a couple of times, just to kind of see what they did, they maximized it and they ended up taking the set. And I was like, I know I can beat this person, but man, they played super solid. So it is what it is, right? I can't be too mad about any of that. I only got so much time right now and they 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 got my number at the moment. Yeah. Where are you at in ranked right now? Um, master. I picked up, uh, I didn't play any, I went to master and I stopped. Yeah. I just play casual, but yeah. I've been playing... I play casuals and sometimes I'll get casual like masters around like 15 1600 and like it'll be pretty close but they'll like they'll beat me generally consistently like in long sets. Yeah, yeah. Like I might uh I might get like the first two games and then they'll kind of figure me out mm -hmm. and then they'll get like the next like five. Mm -hmm. And then I'll I'll have adjusted and it'll I'll be like 8 and 10 with them. But if I'm playing against somebody that's like mid diamond or like 1300 master like it's it's pretty consistent i'm like eight out of ten just clobbering them yeah 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 it's just my setups are too good i guess or they just i'm just doing too much gimmicky stuff and i just keep changing it up mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. well because these games regardless of which game you're playing fighting games in general are just so vast and there's so much to learn and even learning one game doesn't necessarily make you better in another game. Some things do kind of cross over um like even for right now like for me learning tekken this is the first time I've taken a Tekken seriously. My my learning with Tekken was one through three, the original trilogy, you know? Same, yeah. And that's just mashing and we're kids and cousins and things like that. Um, and then the only other time that I've put a lot of work into a 3D game was Soul Calibur VI. Oh. So, and that was my first Soul Calibur. I didn't grow up with that. I had friends that did, but, it, you know, Soul Calibur didn't interest me until that uh, that iteration came out. So I'm kind of just leaning on what I've learned in that game to take me so far in Tekken 8. And and I feel like even recently now with the entire group at Button Club leveling up, I feel like I've hit a little bit of a, of a wall now. I was doing okay, and now I'm like, wow, I, I, I don't know anything compared to what these guys Yeah, we got some killers coming in. Yeah, like absolutely. Some real, like, <laughs> which is good, right? You want to see great. that community absolutely. grow. I, I got a story about Soul Calibur. I was playing Soul Calibur 1, I think, with uh, my buddy Dave, who came in last week. He was the one with the, the 8 bit. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So um, I, I played like, we played a, like a long set, and he just like, I think it was like 102 or something. Like it was wild. Oh my he just God. Me. Oh my he God. He just ring out at me with Sophia. And then like I started to like, finally like you know what fine i right, let me let me adjust and then he was like oh I, i'll let me actually play the game now uh, <laughs> he's just like oh no <laughs> so i got i got ptsd over soul caliber one mm. <laughs> it's a good game i i remember um do you have any experience with dartmouth mall even though you grew up in Florida? Yeah, dream machine dream machine right and then uh the first time walking into the dream machine and seeing um <sighs> virtua fighter 2 Big, big screen, the yep. actual sit-down seats that you could play on because every other arcade's a stand-up. And that just being such a slow but simple game and ring-outs, that would trigger people. You'd see people get so pissed with ring-outs. Well, it feels like it's cheating, right? Because it's just like, oh, you didn't kill me. You just hit me a few times and then I got, I yeah, got a ring-out. Yeah, out. yeah, But people that's like, like that. that's the reality of the game, right? So then you could even say that that being um you know put into those games is, is that is that throwing a bone to the the um the, the lesser skilled is is that kind of like what uh people are talking about with newer fighting games maybe i mean it, it really boils down to like you gotta it's a knowledge check right yeah, yeah do you know how to deal with this and if not 
I'm just gonna cross you up with Ken and sweep you, yeah, yeah, and, and kill you in that that CVS tournament because you ain't as good as you think you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's good because that's a learning opportunity, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's how you look at it. But yeah, the the newer stuff, like, so the only way to win is knock them out or time out, right? That's yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, where ring out was like a whole another win condition, which mm-hmm. is interesting. Yeah, you don't see a lot of that in in games anymore. No, in the fighting games, uh, still only in Soul Calibur, and that would like. So my my hardcore group of friends that that grew up playing Soul Calibur, they set up their own rules. <laughs> okay, so they were like no ring outs, um, and the time was always set to infinite. So when I wanted to get into Soul Calibur six, so I could have a game to jam with them at, um, I was like, we started holding tournaments at the house at the apartment, and I would say, look. We're going to run it how they run it in these tournaments because if you guys want to start coming out, because I was really hoping to get this friend group into fighting games with me beyond Soul Calibur and come to tournaments. And I was like, if you come out to an event, this it's not going to be the this, rules that you set. Format, so, yeah. yeah, we need to do, you know, uh, first to win three rounds. Ring outs are okay. And the time, I think, for Soul Calibur was 99 seconds maybe. Um and that would get them so salty too. Like I would have separate combos. There's there's certain stages in there that would have half walls, and uh, I'm an Astroth man in Soul Calibur Six, so I had a certain combo that uh, I would hit them, and then bring them up with the uh, the axe, and it would just throw them completely overboard. So if you were Yay! yeah, if you were at that part of the stage and I hit you, I'm I'm getting that ring out. I, I want to finish this round quick as possible. You know. Yeah. The um. I lost my thoughts. Uh, that's okay. Even like there's a, a mechanic in that game called Reversal Edge. Um, so you know parry, right? Yep. But in this game, Reversal Edge was one button. And as long as you held it, you would parry all these hits without having to do any type of timing or anything. You know, like at least Street Fighter Six, you have to hit parry. And if you want perfect parry for a different thing, there's timing involved, right? But this, you could just hold the button. And the only thing that would be... Um, Reversal, uh, not Reversal Edge. Uh, what did I call it? I thought it was Reverse Edge or Reversal Edge. I think yeah. that's what you said. The only thing that would break that would be an electric move. Oh, okay. Like two buttons. Not even throws? Not even, no, you could you could what? basically, yeah, negate throws. So you had Parry that would do the same thing. Then you had, uh, yeah, Reversal Edge, which would do that button combo. So if I was hitting you with a big, big combo, ching, 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 and you're not thinking about it, you're just holding a button... And that got people really salty, but like anything else, there's counterplay to that. So you would do the electric. You would bait it out. You would know every time I approach them on their wake up, they're going to do this button, so let me break it here. And it was the same thing with parries. Amongst that group of friends, they loved playing the back-and-forth parry game. I'm going to hit you, you parry. Uh, and then since since you parried, you're going to want to hit me, so I'm going to parry. And they would have these parry wars, and I'm like, this is a bad habit for you guys because I'm going to parry your hit. And then I'm just going to electric through it and punish you for it, you know? So, like, um, even with the, the the more, we'll call them, scrubbier mechanics that can happen, there still is always counterplay. And it's the, the mind games that you play in the fighting games that will take you the furthest, right? Yeah, if you can play the player, that's usually better than playing the character. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I remember my thought, I was, because you had the... Um, your friend group made their own rules for uh, Soul Calibur. Yeah, yeah. And so that's kind of what happened with Smash, right? They were like, oh, well, if we only this level and then only this. And no take items. All, or... the, all the stuff that, like, your casual player would be like, well, you're taking all the fun out of it, right? But yeah, like, yeah. No, but then this makes this a real fighting game. And it's, like, interesting to see that that grew from there because it's so... It's marketed towards the casual, but that game, like, from... All the people that I know that play Smash like has such an amazing depth to it. Uh huh. That's like wild. Yep, yep. There's a lot. Like, and I find that when Smash players start playing other fighting games, what they've learned through Smash, I feel like they play very differently. They can grasp these concepts and techniques really quickly and easily because their foundation was a, was a little bit more difficult, like movement wise and things like that. Where my history being Street Fighter 2 and, and, you know, the Mortal Kombat trilogies and things like that, I have such a different way to try and, like, unprogram myself from that and play, you know, how an adult or someone with a brain is supposed to play, right? Right. The uh, One of the things that I liked about Smash, the, one of the things that I like the most about 
Smash having a community and existing because they added to that vocabulary. Tomahawk. Empty jump throw is called a tomahawk. Oh, I didn't know that. Beautiful. I didn't know that. Instead I... of saying empty jump throw, just say tomahawk. It's, it's why why are we saying empty jump anything yeah, at this yeah, point? Yeah. Just make another name for it. Huh. Well, that's cool. Did you guys know that? Let us know in the comments because I had no idea. What would empty jump low be? I don't know. Yeah. Write that one down. Yeah, just make something up. I'll believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's uh, let's let's start a chain with that. Maybe we can start naming something else. <laughs> um, what else was I gonna say? So your favorite classic uh, fighting game to play, and your favorite modern ga uh, day uh, fighting game to play. Oh, CBS Two was like the Rolls Royce of fighters. Uh, no nothing's ever gonna come to like beat that in my yeah. mind. It's got such a level of depth. It's got something for everybody. Every character plays different depending on the groove that you pick. It's just like, it's just so interesting to see like, oh, Ryu, right? Like he's just classic Shoto, but give him a run and a short jump. Now now he's playing Rushdown, mm. you know? Like, yeah, it's because just, of the groove system. Because right? of the groove system is an incredible level of depth. It's not super balanced at like high, high levels. Um, and that's, that's, so that's another thing, sorry to diatribe. No, but no, no. That's a thing that in like Street Fighter Six, they're like, oh, blah, 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 you know, it's it's so much easier. It's also really damn balanced compared to like older games. There's yeah. no like, other than Dalsim and Zangief and Lily, there's nobody has like crazy bad matchups. Like it's, it's all pretty even and it's a pretty even playing field and they're doing a lot to make sure that that stays that way. Like, mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't do a balance patch until, you know, now. Basically, yeah, yeah. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. A subtle hand is going to be really useful. Like, I was talking to Sage in the hallway about Tekken, and he's like, "Oh, they broke that game in the last patch." And yeah, I like, do that with Mortal Kombat too. Like, you can't have a heavy hand. Like, I, I like the. It's a little boring sometimes. I, I will admit, Street Fighter Six not having a lot of like changes so much, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it helps keep it to the point that if you are starting out, you still kind of have all this knowledge that you can build off of like it's not they didn't change so much that the uh, like street fighter 4 i was like oh let me look at this and i'm like oh well this is super street fighter 4 not ultra street fighter 4 this stuff doesn't work anymore yeah yeah you know so that's something that i think newer games get better usually although maybe not with mortal Kombat. questionably more, better <laughs> questionably better if it's done well it's it's more balanced than the older games that's a that's a true statement though. No, that's that's real. Cause like you wouldn't get a balance update until the next iteration of the game. So Street Fighter Two didn't get updated until um, you know hyper fighting and and so on and so forth. And then with the thought of fairness being a thing, especially because these games weren't released and esports wasn't a term back in nineties or whatever, right? Um, the mindset that is there for that to be real now, and, and many people have said that Street Fighter Six is like one of the most balanced games on release, probably to date. That that says a lot about um, different characters being viable and the tools that you can learn. And not having a big balance patch, it does feel like it has been a while, and things can get a little stale for certain people. Not for me. I'm still having a good time. Yeah, I'm having a good time. But I find that like there'd be times in um, like Guilty Gear when I was playing Guilty Gear or even like DNF Duel, I would finally get accustomed to something, and then it would change. Yeah. And I found when that happened every three months or so it was more difficult to apply the new change. Where I feel like right now I've got such a great hand on Street Fighter Six and what the game is about that if something was to change even somewhat drastically, I would have so much more of an easier time remembering that. Because like what I, what I have learned now has been so ingrained into me rather than like I just got muscle memory for this new combo, this new thing, and I have to change my entire approach or combo route for things like that. Yeah. Um, back to so CBS2. It's just it's good. Play it. Play, Play CBS2. CBS2. Yeah. Play it. It's good. It's come like, by Button Club. Okay. We'll introduce you to Tomato and you can come by. The brackets are completely free, right? Yep, they're free. You get uh, top three, you get a sticker. I buy like lots and lots of stickers from Redbubble periodically, just like this one, which I absolutely love. Yeah, that's just that's some. Like I wish I knew the artist so I could credit them, but <laughs> they, I love uh, that sticker. Yeah. It's a, it's a great sticker. There's a ton of cool stickers, and then you just get to play with people that like to play. And there's all varying levels, like I said. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen like Monokai kicking around, but I'm sure if he showed up and we were running a bracket, he would he would run it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like I think we're kind of at a sweet spot where 
people have decent fundamentals, so it can be like it can, it's anybody's game. Mm. You know, like uh, Diddle will come through and and just beat me up every now and then, even yeah. though I got like the roll cancels and all the like all the sleazy stuff, and he's just like, yeah, let me just fundamentally beat you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like it's it's good. I think it's cool that like no one's been afraid to enter uh, your brackets. No one's ever been really like, oh, like I, I'm here for this, and I, I don't, I don't play that. I'm almost intimidated. I feel like it's it's easy to get into because it is so fun and carefree, and people who are good are naturally good. You're not going to beat yourself up by saying, well, you know, clearly you've got more experience in this game than I do, so I would expect to lose. But I had fun along the way, or I figured things out because I know so much about other fighting games. Yeah, and there's no money on the line either, so it's like you know, you can go there and sweat if you want, but. At the same time, you don't have to either. You can just go and like just play, and just express yourself through buttons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, what's your favorite modern day fighting game? I mean, Street Fighter Six has captivated me in a way that I haven't been since, you know, CBS. Like it's just it's got a lot of depth to it. It's the first time I settled on a main was Jamie. That's the first time I've ever been like I'm gonna play this character. I was playing CBS too. Even now, I don't know what my team is. I like I'll pick I pick random in bracket. Really? Yeah. I'll like oh, random wow. groove, random pick, just like whatever. I know enough of it. I've been playing so much of it that I can at least I know what the broken buttons are, right? And that'll get you pretty far. Mm-hmm. The um, but Street Fighter Six is like, although I did try playing Chun and I was having not a not a Chun, not a Chun time. Not yeah. a <laughs> there's a there's a pun there. You don't strike me as a Chun Li player, no. I like her. I think she's got so much swag. She is cool, and she's playing a very different version of Street Fighter Six compared to the rest. I feel like. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite retro and modern? Um. Modern would definitely be Street Fighter Six. Also, I'm absolutely in love with that game, and uh, you know, I, I loved it before it was even released. Playing all the betas and. Um, you know, getting into Street Fighter Five, I was a little bit late on it. Like I bought it on release, but didn't really get into it till season two. So that's when everything really started for me. Um, so I feel like, you know, spending time getting good and then taking what you've learned into a new game really shot up my my progression. <clears throat> um, and then my favorite classic game's got to be, yeah, I would say Hyper Fighting, just because that's like really what started it all for me. And I can play that game on my Super Nintendo over there or on Fightcade and just feel like, ah, this is like old slippers or something. That game is so busted, too. So comfortable. And I don't know busted shit. I'm just trying to do, like, fundamentals and, and, you know, fireball DP and things like that. And, like... um, It's good, though. It's good. Like, it it still holds up. It still does. I wouldn't want to play it for money, ever. No, no, no. (laughs) That's all the Super... That's all the Street Fighter 2s. I would never want to play that for money. Mm -hmm. But, like, it's, it's fun. Did you ever, uh, so growing up and the cousin that introduced me to Street Fighter, he had a, uh, a VHS tape and it was how to play the Street Fighter. Oh, Fighters. I've seen those. You've seen that, right? Yeah, I've seen that. They sell them. There's a place called in uh, Easton. It's called E-R-I-K, Eric. It's like Emporium of Retro and Interesting Collectibles or something. Okay. They have those for sale there. Oh, The VHSs. Wow. I don't know if they're like still good because like, you know, the, the medium, the magnetic film kind of degrades but they have those for sale so like if you're trying to go go get that them tapes that's where they are they actually i've i've watched it on here let me see if i can find it before we go yeah so i had i think it was this one it's just a few minutes long and it shows everything and like it even has uh, japanese ads in it and stuff like that oh that's great so it wasn't until I saw this one here, which is the full 43 minutes. Um, I don't want to get copyright strikes or anything. Oh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Just You guys can see it, you right? can, Yeah, you can see it being played right there. And it's it's very in its time period, you know, like the, the, the <laughs> oh, main yeah, backwards host. Cap. Backwards cap. And the way he's talking, we're so excited to be here at Capcom America. Look, he's even got like... Uh, the flannel shirt around his waist and the tucked in t-shirt and everything. Oh, yeah. But this goes in depth and he even talks to a few like high level players and the combo routes. When I watch this again as an adult, I remember being like, wow, like I had no idea you could do some of those things or how difficult, tricky they were. So, of course, I see this and I plug in my 30th anniversary uh, version of the game and I go into training mode. I'm trying these I'm like, man, like some of these combos are uh, out of this world. Like it, it would blow my mind. Oh, Guile's got some good ones, especially the ones that ended his like uh, double somersault or like 
because it's a pretzel motion. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. It's like cross up, like, uh, hi chop, I don't know, heavy punch or whatever, and then, like, a couple of little jabs, and then into that, and it's just, what? And what about the guile handcuffs? You know about that? The handcuffs. Is that, like, when you're at a distance that's just you can't escape? Yeah, it's like a glitch, and then he can just walk up and throw you a bunch, and then oh. as soon as you, I think you stand on your feet again, and he's able to walk and... Yep, yeah, yeah I've seen that. That's, uh, th- those glitches are great. I like watching, um, Justin Wong's really good for doing that, especially in, like, MVC2. He was, like, I think during COVID, he was just, just going nuts with it on Fightcade. Yeah, yeah. And he would just be playing people, like, in the match, and, like, you know, they're just sweating, right, because they're playing ranked. And he's just trying to get these glitches. Like, he's playing, but he's also trying to, like, side goal, get these glitches, which is yeah, yeah. great to watch. Uh-huh. So that's, like, I-, I think that's where I saw the handcuffs, because he was doing that, I think. Maybe. <laughs> but that's... The glitches are funny. And shit like that is just so broken. And if that happens to you at an arcade, right? You've, you've paid your quarter or two to play. Someone gives you in the guile handcuffs. You're not playing the game. You just lost your money and you're salty. You don't understand. You can't pull out your phone to go type in. What the what's, hell? Yeah, exactly. What's, what's guile handcuffs and how do I get around it? So I, I think at the end of the day... Of course, certain things were more difficult, certain things are easier now, and vice versa, but fighting games are just straight up hard. Yeah, they're just, these are not, these are not easy games, and they take a lot of dedication to get good at, and that, that's that's how it is with all competitive games. Of course. But yeah. I feel like it's a little, there's more mind games in, in these than you would say, like a shooter, right? Like, it's just, oh, let me go around the corner, and then... You know, you're you're cutting a little pie or whatever, or you like peak low, or you peak high, or you like go and like he, he sees you running this way, and then you go around and like it's just like the strats, yeah, yeah. There's a little mind games, but mostly it's just like twitch reflexes, like can you can you click the thing at the right time or keep your you know your crosshair there, and then there's team strategies, which is mm-hmm. another level, and I think that's where the the interesting uh, on shooters, that's where like the interest is the teamwork for me. Yeah. But for these, I feel like it's just. You and somebody else, and then you are just having a conversation, right? Yes. I'm going to say this. Do you know what this means? All right. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you say back to that? And then you just go back and forth. And it's it's really, it, it can be really expressive, which is uh, great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember someone explaining it like that, saying that there's like a conversation going on. And and earlier in, in getting into competitive fighting games, I went to Defend the North. Uh, it's probably like 2016, 2017. <laughs> And I'm watching everything at face value, but I don't, I still don't understand like what players are trying to achieve and what some of these like sneaky tactics are or whatever, you know? Um, and then I remember watching, I want to say it was like Evo, maybe Evo 2018. And I, I was, was coming together. I could start to see what, what they were trying to do, especially since it wasn't a game that I really, really understood. Yep. Um, yeah, you can, you can really see what's going on and how delicate that can be and you go oh he did this i wonder if he'll change up the mix up to the next thing next time oh yeah he did oh what's he gonna say oh that totally he he did a so he did b and now he's thinking oh shit i can't do that anymore or i can't pressure like this like i absolutely love that part of it so the depth of the game that you have to understand in order to get there uh, is is something to really appreciate. Yeah, and then they mix you up, right? You're watching, and you're like, "Oh, we did what? He yeah, did yeah. What? I didn't even know that was an Why option. Why would you do that? That yeah. makes no sense, but it worked, yeah. right? Like if it, yeah. if it works, it ain't stupid. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Competitive it games. It's it's great. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say on the topic? I'm sure there was when you were talking, but I don't want to interrupt you. So no, that's all good. It's all good. Um, I guess at the end of the day, the, the answer can't, it can't be answered, right? Everyone would have a different opinion about this or that. And then like, we basically came to the conclusion, it, fighting games are just difficult and, and, but cool because they're so difficult. Yeah. I don't think they're any harder overall than they have been in the past mm-hmm. because I can have an, I can have an enjoyable time now. I can just sit on my couch, right? play Street Fighter 6 in training mode where, like, input lag's not, like, the biggest thing, Mm -hmm. and I can lab. And I have all the tools that I need to just sit there and lab and, like, get something out of it, where Mm -hmm. the older games, that's not really the case. You have to go and, like, find somebody to lab with. So, like I was saying, you know, just as 
the players that you're going to play against now are way better than they have been in the past. Like anybody, even though like your your you know your your basic like iron player or whatever is probably better than like a random person that just picked up the game and plays at home and doesn't play because they at least have that experience of playing and they're like playing competitively in ranked and they are trying to improve, which is something that I don't think was as much before. Like mm-hmm. the, the amount of people that entered Evo was, was 7,000 something people. The yeah. Street Fighter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild amount. Yeah, no, I think the first Evo was like less than 100 people. Yeah, like crazy. Like Defend the North was bigger than the first Evo. Yeah, right? yeah, oh, like, by a lot, yeah. And like even when you, uh, I've, I've watched old videos of the first Evo like coming together and they were shocked that people came from like other parts of the world but it was all because of like some of the shit talking that was going on certain you know online yeah. forums and people travel like i think they had like players from indonesia and and god knows wherever else all showing up and the interest in fighting games i guess that's another that's another great point to bring up is the amount of people that were playing fighting games then or uh, not even just casually at a high level compared to the amount of people that are playing fighting games right now at, at all levels right yep evo being so big last year and in all the entrances then that people had and and every year steadily these majors are uh at least the good ones are gaining more people more viewership and followers and things like that yeah, and they're all labbing there's everybody everybody that you meet knows something that you don't know mm-hmm. so like if you get to communicate with them or they get to communicate then now that knowledge is out there yeah and like you can draw on that collective knowledge that you just couldn't before like if I, the, what is it, the Super Combo Wiki for CVS2 is, like, getting better. But if I wanted to, when I started actually trying to learn how to get good, I think Silent Scope was kind of just starting up his, his YouTube page and the Super Combo Wiki was, like, non-existent. You had to get what was called the Bible. And it was a strategy guide that you give, it's Japanese, and you have to go, and it's got the frame data, and you got to try to, you know, Google Translate your friend. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, so that's, like, the tools just weren't there. No. I'd have to watch footage, and uh, I ended up, I think the Evo, Evo Japan is, like, they play down there. They play some CVS. It's yeah. amazing. And they play whatever character they want. Like, they're not, like, top tiers or, like, people will play them, but you'll see people play in, like, mid-tiers and, like, actually, like, making them better because they're actually exploring the tiers and the, the characters and some of the older games like the characters aren't as well explored and the newer games the characters are very well explored mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like watch um any of justin wong's like videos during covid from marvel vs. captain capcom 2 and like he is getting down with these low tier characters and just like smoking people mm-hmm. that are playing high tier and like that actually changed up how people perceive the tier list like now even to, yeah all these years later as a result of that mm-hmm. and then other people getting down like jam croft and, and him were doing that and it was like it was amazing to watch like not like oh magneto like infinite you know like yeah just, oh uh, i hit you now you're dead right the typical yeah like so it's good to watch that exploration so i think maybe older games are harder because of the information, the lack of it. Lack of Cause it. Because that's yeah. really what it boils down to. It's grinding and access to information. If you can do both of those things, you can get to master. Mm-hmm. Like that's and that's not because the game's easier, it's because you have the tools to achieve the thing that Everywhere. you are trying to yeah. do. You want a character guide? <laughs> Just a simple type into YouTube and you've gotten it. Where I, I saw an interview with Seth Killian one time. He was talking about how uh, in these old like Game Pro magazines or even through friends and bodegas, they would try and obtain these old VHS tapes that were, were, were recorded of um, tournaments back then. And he's like, and by the time I've gotten it, it's like the eighth version or eighth copy of this. So it's barely <laughs> recognizable as to what's going on, but you were still able to see so-and-so did this, and maybe that's the setup or whatever, where now everything is at least 1080p. Uh, you can watch someone streaming it live right now if you were just to pick up Street Fighter VI. You didn't know what to do. You go to Twitch, Street Fighter VI, see everyone streaming it, and you can even get a grasp on the game before you've ever even played it where that was not the thing here. You'd have to put an extra quarter in on player two side when you're by yourself just to try and yep. work on something yeah, or whatever. the same character twice. That way you get twice the life bar. Yeah, right? yeah, there you go. That's yep, the way yep. to do it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, for that point, like um, what I was making before, like there's 
people are people are on YouTube, right? There's somebody that I I watch on YouTube, and I should probably find who they are. I'll have him uh, put it in the comment mm. who that is. But it's this um, female Jamie player that has been doing match analysis of like master and legend level players who did not play ranked at all, and is get, I'm learning. I am learning. I'm a master Jamie player, and I'm learning good stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> from this analysis and then she went and played and i think she got like gold and like she was thrilled wow. that she got gold. like and you watched her go through like all the stuff and she's talking while she's playing she's like oh i know that's not optimal but like the nerves are getting to her yeah like, it's yeah, like, yeah yeah it's it's so knowing the stuff is part of it and then executing is the other part so it's it's the the knowledge will get you to be able to execute I love fighting games. Yeah, much more. Play fighting games. Go 100%, out and play fighting games. Hundred percent. And even like you know, uh, if the arcade scene is all you had back then, you had people that you could chime ideas off of, right? And it's the same thing with locals. Every week we can say, "Hey, what was that setup? Is that a safe jump? Is that this, this, and that?" What I love about the the online community with fighting games, if I'm in Battle Hub and I lose to someone first to ten, or even win, you pull up the chat. I've asked people. Uh, what could I have done better? Can you help me out with, oh, well, you should throw this, you should throw that, I noticed this was that, blah, blah, blah. And so, like, the the information you can get with just playing the game with someone and typing back and forth within the game is absolutely huge. And there's always just so much information and, and things that you can learn, which is why it's, a, it's, a, it's another beautiful step of fighting games is when when are you the best? And when are you always the best, right? Yeah, right. If you're always the best, you're not in the right group, right? Like, that's, that's you got to go to where you're, like struggling and challenged and challenged and that's that's how you're going to grow it's that that struggle will you know refine the edge so you can cut better mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's completely like i would not be nearly as good as i am at street fighter if i didn't go to button club like a hundred percent the grind like it motivated me it, it, and then i got to talk to people bounce ideas off of them see their passion yeah, yeah you know what yeah. i mean see how they're dealing with their losses seeing how they're dealing with their wins and like just kind of everybody's just collectively pushing each other up. It's like so motivating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the whole like. That's why I love that it's even called a club because we we're all we're all competing every week, but we're all friends, um, and we all we get salty from time to time. I remember, a little salty, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember you beating me in bracket, and I was just so pissed. I was so salty, and it wasn't even the fact that like you had beaten me or this and that, but I was beating myself up. And be, because we care, right? We're, we spend a lot of time doing this throughout the week and, and you know, the late nights of watching replays and, and practicing. So you, you want to put your best foot forward. And uh, and then you came outside. You're like, you good? And I'm like, yeah, like, I'm good. Like, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at myself and how I've been lacking lately and uh, sucking at this game, not, basically, you know? I remember sitting next to you and you're like, I can't believe that worked. And I was like, yeah, me either. Because <laughs> I went, you know how, like, you watch, like, really good players play? And then it becomes like really degenerate because they're trying to play each other. They're like, I know that this person knows this, so that I do this and that. I did something like that. It was like, I don't remember what it was, but it was like a stupid idea to normally do, but I did it and it worked. And you were like, I can't believe that works. I was like, I know, man. I know. I'm sorry, but I'm like, uh, at the same time, I'm not. Yeah, no, it is what it is. All is fair in, in the uh, in the art of war, but. Yeah, man, there's just some of those days. My brother's left mad. Moon last week left salty, and and you know, and this is his first Street Fighter because he comes from the um, the the Smash World too. So it's great to see that he's done so well for himself. But yeah, you put a lot of time into it. Oh, he, he does his homework. He does I went, his homework. I went and beat him twice in bracket one week, and then he came back and he like just stomped me. He yeah, was like, he, he knew. Yeah, like, I was doing my stuff, and he was like, "I got the punish for that every time." I'm like, "Oh." I have a really bad habit. Thank you for showing me that. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on that now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I beat him like two weeks in a row, and then the third week he beat me. And at the end of it, I walked up to him. I was like, so, you know, like, what What changed? What, what did you notice? He's like, oh, I just went and watched the replays. I saw what I was doing wrong. I saw that you had a tendency to do this, this, and that. So then, of course, I was doubly motivated to watch the replay that night. So when I beat him the next week, it was from a very simple strategy, but I noted that every time I wanted to jump in, he was trying to parry. And he would hold that parry. So he ate so much punish counter damage yep. for me throwing him out of the parry state that like it it just built up, you know? Oh yeah, I got something for him. I'm I'm working on some some tick throw because he he texts my throws like 
constantly. I'd be trying to throw him yeah. all the time, and he's just teching it, teching it, teching it. And I'm like, why? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm working on some stuff to like punish that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jamie actually is pretty well equipped to do that. Like for as low tier as everybody says he is, he's like an absolute monster in the corner. And yeah. he's got some stuff that I don't see a lot of people do, but it's really good. I just need to like execute it. <laughs> see, so um, Jamie, where the the tier list that uh, Ricky and I did, the Jamie tier, some of those, you know, um, because because it's two people coming together to make a tier list, so not everything is where I would put it, not everything is where he would put it, and I would say when it comes to fighting Jamie's online. It's, it's a complete 50-50 for me. They're either just not that great at the character, so I'm able to smoke them on very easy things, or they're so good at the character that, like, I still don't know what's going on, or I still don't have an idea of this setup. I find Jamie to be uh, tricky at times with what he's trying to do. He's got... The the thing that I've noticed with him, the more I learn, he's got a, he's got a setup for every situation. There's, yeah. like, nothing that he can't deal with other than, like, lots of sonic booms at certain ranges. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just, like, once you get in with him, if you can stay in, it's, like, it just, it's great. Yeah. Like. Once he has his drinks. The, that throw drink buff. I was going to say. Just, oh, it changed everything. It is so good. It, and then level, um, change in level one, the frame data, the damage, and that's very, very helpful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, level two could, oh, yeah, and help in level two was good, too. Level two still needs a little help. I think it should, um, there should be some scaling stuff that changes with it like you know how um uh when you do a car- target combo you get like crazy scaling mm. um like confirming into level two is really difficult without like target combo or um there's a few other ways you can confirm into it but by the time you get to that it's scaled so much that the optimal damage thing doesn't leave you in like a super great like mix-up situation okay yeah yeah so if it kicked back like the damage scaling maybe like two hits of that target combo, you could do the more optimal, like, setup instead of going for damage because you want the damage at that point. Of like, course. I need damage yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I need, I need them to be panicked because mm-hmm. now I'm, like, ready to go, so I need them to panic, but maybe I should just go for the setup. Like, that's the thing. You got to you go drink, setup, or damage. That's the... the... And that's not... And that, so that's... That's what makes that character more difficult and, and and more nuanced, which would work their way down. Because even as a Guile player, I'm, I'm thinking damage or setup. And most of the time, my setups don't leave me that close to you. So it's really much more back to my, my zoning game and, and things like that. Yeah, like the drink setup, the throw drink in the corner, like you, you there's two... There's a setup for when you just drink, you're like plus seven, which is really good. You can basically throw out free free medium kick. If they press any button, you're going to hit them. If they mm-hmm. don't press anything, you whiff. Mm-hmm. And that's fine too. But it catches jumping. It catches a lot of things, and then you can build off of that. And then when you transform, you can do heavy kick into whatever you want. Or you can just kind of wait, see what they do, and walk forward. But that gives me – I don't have to make the choice between – drink damage or setup it gives me all those things okay, at the okay. same time but it limits my options right so now there's only really like two optimal things i can do and then after that i'm kind of like Out of freestyling yeah, you know okay. like I'm, and now i gotta trick you yeah 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 like oh he doesn't know cool and mm-hmm. then after that i got a trick mm-hmm. you know cool cool well See, that was that was easy over an hour, right? Not bad. Not once bad. we once we get to Gavin, sometimes uh, you know, Ricky will be on here. He's like, I don't know how we're gonna fill up an hour's worth of time. I like, do. Once we get going, there's it's no easy way. to talk. It is. It, it's easy when you love something like this. Yep. It's absolutely easy to talk. So, uh, if you're looking to get in contact with Tomato about anything, how can people reach out to you? Um. So yeah, I didn't study for this. I am on Twitter or X, whatever it's called. Yeah. T zero M A seven zero. Because somebody was squatting on tomato. Like my whole life, mm-hmm. so we're just we're rolling with T zero MA seven zero. I'm on YouTube as well. I got my own little channel. We I, can put all the links down in the yeah. description for you. I don't guys. do a lot with the uh, with that anymore. I was getting into some of the console hacking and that sort of thing for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm Tomato on CFN like T zero MA seven zero. Like if you if I'm anywhere, type T zero MA seven zero. You are gonna find me. Mm-hmm. And he's there every week at Button Club Weeklies, running Tomatoes Retro Garden and participating in Street Fighter Six. So yeah, if you want to reach out to him, those are the ways to do it. 
Uh, that's going to be it for this episode of the Safe Sets Podcast. I want to thank you so much for filling in for me well, and, for and hanging me. out. It's been a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video like we enjoyed making it, please hit the like button. Share with some of your friends. Comment down below what you thought of some of this information or what's your input on the topic. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We just reached over 1,700 subscribers this nice. week. It was a big milestone for us, and we hope to just keep on going. Um, also, don't forget to check out some of our other episodes of the Safe Sets Podcast. You can check out our weekly tournaments, uh, we do live stream, product unboxings and reviews. So there's plenty of content out there for you to enjoy uh, if you'd like to do so. I've been Shadow Fury. With me is Tomato. We will catch you guys on the next episode of the Safe Sets Podcast. Keep pressing those buttons and stay safe. Play fighting games. <laughs> Go play fighting games. All day with us. <laughs>